Welcome back to another Tech Depth Prepare video. In today's edition, we'll be working on the iPad 5th generation. So the iPad 5th generation actually goes by the model name of A1474. So this iPad actually has a cracked uh, digitizer. For these models, the LCD and the digitizer, they're separate, they don't come together. So it is possible to just fix the glass without changing the LCD, as long as the LCD is not damaged. And one particular thing that you need to notice is that this model doesn't come with the touch ID. So it's also preferable to get a replacement part that comes with the home button because switching the home button in this scenario would be like just a waste of resources. On the other hand, the tools we're gonna be using for this repair would be uh, the frame glue remover. So this is actually a very good tool in contrast of isopropyl alcohol. I'll definitely recommend to use the frame glue remover for the back glass because the viscosity on these things kind of like works very good to like lift the screen without like having too much uh, precision. But if you only have isopropyl 99% proof, it also works. It's just, I would definitely recommend to use the frame glue remover and for polishing i would use uh, exacto knife 18 make sure like there is no debris or glass left over to make sure like the seat uh, the screen sits flat perfectly and optionally you can always like use the steel brush tool that's usually been used for the back glass repair so it would make the process of the repair much efficient and smoother so like complementing this with the exacto knife is a great idea uh, the only screen i mean screwdrivers you're gonna need would be the phillips screw nothing more not like iphone where you have like multiple phillips screws tri-wing screws panel screws so you only need the phillips screws and best to use a plastic card during the extraction or you can always use the conventional jimmy or pry opening tool so without further ado let's get into the video so the first thing you want to do is like preheat the mat at a temperature between um, 60 to 70 degrees celsius and in the meantime while it's warming up we're gonna go ahead and start uh, put in a little bit of frame glue remover so for this i like to use the dripper it's just much better than like the, your average syringe because like it's a little bit inconvenient to always go through the syringe just try to put them around the edge of the frame so these iPads, they're not rated IP67. So like, even though it may seem like nothing goes in, it actually goes in on a microscopic level. Just make sure like you apply it gently just around the frame. For more precision, you can always flip it. And let it stand for a cool five, 10 minutes. So after it, is warm enough you can just flip it and start finding an enclosure using the pry tool i recommend leaving the mat on for like a couple of minutes just so you don't lose that momentum so when you come in close contact with the cracked glass always make sure you go under deep enough so you can lift it and like you're poking it step by step. So as we go from where the impact is, I would go just like poking and lifting. Okay, so once this side is completely scrapped, move on to the other. So this is the part you just want to exercise a little bit of caution because there are some ribbon cables uh, for good habits even though they're meaningless when it comes to this type of repair you don't want to lose the good habits so always go the same fashion you're going from each of the side of the frame while i'm saying this is that for future ipad generation that comes with the touch id the ribbon cable sits just underneath here so that's why i said for good habits also, it is recommended to wear goggles during this repair because some of the debris can get into your eyes. Definitely don't want this. Okay, so once it's like open good enough, we can start using the plastic card. Just find the closure. 
patience is key you want to go slow and easy and then like all ipads it should open like a book but like i said there will be some tiny debris stuck that's why we have the exacto knife but it will roughly open like a book so this was the cable ribbon cable of the home button I was talking about. So yeah, like I said, for good habits. This is the connection of the digitizer. And that is the actual LCD, the Phillips screws holding the LCD. And let's move on with the repair. So after opening the iPad, the first thing is to like, get rid of all those four screws holding the LCD. Next, make sure like the way is clear because the LCD lift up vertically. So you want to make sure there's nothing in the way, such as tiny debris like this one. You can let it sit flat. As I can tell you already, like this part will come with the replacement. I definitely don't recommend buying uh, one that doesn't come with the home button because the price difference doesn't make any sense. Okay. Lift the screen, pull it slide like that and hold it vertically until you take out the metal bracket holding the LCD connection. But first thing you wanna do is disconnect the battery. That's a must to make sure the device is completely discharged. You could use like the official disconnector, but what I usually do, uh, go underneath and make sure you just lift it just a bit. It doesn't need to be too crazy. That's it. Just a tiny poke like that, make sure the connection have been separated. So now it's fully discharged. I'm gonna take care of the Phillips screws. Using a plastic spudger, I'm gonna remove the bracket. And notice that the LCD connection usually is already glued onto the metal bracket. So now the LCD is completely free. We're gonna set it aside for now. Make sure no alcohol uh, goes onto the coating because it may do some damage. So you want to put it in a very good clean room and disconnect the digitizer. And underneath here is the connection of the home button. And by the way, guys, if you're looking for any parts or tools, check out the link below. If you're interested in a mail-in repair or advanced data recovery service, we offer all those services at techda.com. So please check us out. Thank you for your support. Okay, now like we're getting rid of the digitizer. So this one, you can completely set it aside. So what we're gonna do now is make sure we can remove the adhesive. And notice that the, the adhesive is onto the frame. It's because the liquid that we use is very specific, is a different type of, um, it doesn't act the same way as the isopropyl would act. So um, it does make a little bit of, the job easier but also you need to have the proper tools for like polishing so using the exacto knife we're gonna get rid of the excess debris next you can always use the steel brush to make sure like the micro debris is gone oh this one actually did some dirt so for the final touch just use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a dry cloth go around the frame Make sure it's as clean as possible. So this is roughly how clean it should be. It doesn't have to be extremely perfect, but it has to be close to this. So like to make sure the screen will sit flat without causing any issue over time by having the screen to get lifted. Because keep in mind, these iPads, they do over time to have like the notorious bend gate. So the flatter it is, the better it is for the screen to stay still without causing it to lift. So roughly, as long as it's like this, you should be okay. Now the next part would be like how to install the screen. So the last step would be the reassembly process. So for this, I highly recommend you guys use an iPad stand with the ESD, which stands for electrostatic discharge. It makes the repair more comfortable and more efficient because of the tilt right here to hold the digitizer and this little lever right here to hold the LCD. So like instead of like going through holding here and there, which are prone to make many more mistakes, 
make the process much easier for you and use one of these tools, which by the way are available in our website techdeb.com. Feel free to check us out. So first we're gonna start with the digitizer. Align it and make sure the connection go respectively to their place. Uh, also one thing what I recommend is start taking out the hardest peel first because it will uh, make it much easier. They tend to like rip in midway. So I'm going to connect the digitizer first. Make sure it clicks. Sometimes they're a little bit tricky to connect, but just aim and make sure it clicks. So like I said, for this digitizer come with the home button pre-installed has to be fully there. Just when you see the white line in close contact to the connection and you hold it like that. So once it's done, now we're gonna reassemble the LCD. So we can make sure it clicks. Okay. So once you hear the click, you can just use the lever like that, boom. And now we can comfortably put back the Phillips screws. We're gonna put the screws holding the battery connections. Reposition the LCD and put the four large Phillips screws holding the LCD panel. Perfect. So once this is completely reassembled, first thing is to check that the screen digitizer works. Okay, so it turns on. Now you wanna remove the stickers to reapply it. Also don't forget to remove the sticker right here. So we're gonna reapply the screws holding onto the LCD. So there was a previous attempt on the on this iPad. So the previous technician who worked on it forgot to put a screw. So I'm just gonna put them back. Three screws is all you need to hold on the LCD. Although it's recommended to have four, but don't stress over it too much if it happens. Close, make sure it sticks, touch screen works, and voila. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And with the help of the community, we'll make sure to assist you. Again, if you saw any LCD replacement parts, digitizer, or battery, check us out at tech.com. We offer mail-in repair services, as well as advanced data recovery service. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.